I got my antenna just a month ago and I have promised I was going to tell you how I like the system after a month. But I want to talk more about the change in my life that the Starlink is producing in me rather than in the technical aspects. I've been working remotely for 20 years, creating and selling software. I like traveling, fixing common things, learning new things, not necessarily rocket science, something as simple as understand how a cooler works and uh, how to repair it delights me. Maybe I'm a little hyper and a risk taker. Some years ago, when my son was finishing school, we bought a small sailboat, basically to understand how they work. We got hooked. Every two years I changed the sailboat for one a little bigger or faster. Always bought one chip and in a bad shape and I fixed it. When I bought one that with difficulties can cross from Florida to Bahamas, I set as a goal going with a sailboat to Bahamas. However, when I talked with somebody that did that trip several times, he said, the most important thing is being self-sufficient. In the most beautiful places, you could be at least a week without cell phone service. What? In my case, working remotely depends on being connected to the internet during normal hours and in case of an emergency, have a way to receive the notification and have a way to connect quickly to a place with a speed enough to take remote control of important servers. Well, I couldn't make that trip with that sailboat, but enjoyed my time fixing a bigger boat so all my family can go. Always thinking how I'm going to resolve my connectivity problem. I made some trips with the sailboats, but always going to places where a cell phone tower was around. Always worried about not having signal or a bad quality. A little more than a month ago, I got news about the new version of Starlink for RBs. And after a few minutes, I pulled the trigger and ordered it. The next day, I was in shock. I received a confirmation that in a week, I will receive it. I was staying in my sailboat in Marathon, Florida, because that place is super beautiful. And there, I have access to internet using my cell phone or going to the marina or to a public library nearby. For this summer, my wife and I planned to visit beautiful places in the area that I knew the cell phone signal was strong. But if a Starlink worked, why not go further? After a week of testing a Starlink in the sailboat, I decided we will jump to Bahamas. Being a new technology, depending on it, is a risk. But what could be better than testing it in uh, inaccessible places? I left Marathon a Sunday at midnight and sailed for 22 hours until I entered Bahamas through an inhabited area. The weather was a little rough so I couldn't test the system in the open ocean. But the system is geofenced and doesn't work 14 miles out of land. The next day I turned on the Starlink and continued sailing towards NASA. The system worked like a charm. The first part of that day the weather was fantastic so after I set the sails and the remote control I connected my computer and started working and having meetings with people from my company. The system worked better than in Marathon. Later, I will tell you why. The second part of the trip was totally different. Storms pop up everywhere and some with heavy lightning. It's not funny when you ride with a portable and big lightning rod. The best way to deal with thunders is avoiding the storms. And to detect them, I used the radar of the boat and a web page that showed me the position and the direction of the storms. There is no cell phone service in that area, so having the Starlinks was key to avoid the storms. My wife flew to NASA, and from there we sailed to a spectacular places in Ulutra, where in general we got cell phone signal, but not of the quality I needed. After two weeks, I invited my son and his wife. He immediately asked me, how can I be connected to the internet? Almost everybody in his company is working remotely. I told him about the Starlink and a few days later they flew. They had a great time. We took advantage of the difference in the time zones, waking up really early to visit touristic sites and reefs. And working since midday when it was around 9 a.m. in Seattle. We did the same task other people do from an office or home, research, development, 
compilations, and even video meetings. When my son was leaving, I asked him, what do you think about the Starlink? He replied, everything was good, except that when we were in meetings, sometimes the connection dropped for a few seconds. That's the problem we have with the Starlink using it in boats, but there is a trick to fix it. But the question that motivated me to take this video was, if I wouldn't have the Starlink, would you have come? He said, probably no. To be honest, me neither. I wasn't aware of the freedom this system was giving to me. Today, we could live in a desert island. The Sable has taught me that being self-sufficient is possible, using solar panels, batteries, water makers, composting bathrooms, and with the internet providing TV, news, communications, movies, the people could live in remote places in this world. Maybe it looks like I'm overreacting, but let's think about the option the Starlink provides to the hotel industry. Nowadays, a lot of people work remotely or hybrid. If a hotel in a remote place guarantees the basic services and the internet service good enough for remote working, a lot of people could stay in those hotels working and enjoying every hour during the free time. People could buy low in places further from town with the security that they will have all they need to live and work. Companies could hire people in remote places. Technically, I could say that the Starlink has been as reliable as my internet at home. The speed is very good enough even for upload or download videos. It can serve to several families at the same time. My cell phone connects to the US service through the Wi-Fi so I can receive or make calls and receive messages. The IP address assigned by the Starlink is from Atlanta. The only problem on boats is that some movement causes the antenna to look for another satellite that generates a disconnection of about 10 seconds that causes an interruption during the call. A little annoying sometimes, but if the boat moves a lot, the system reacts and moves the antenna to a horizontal position and stops looking for satellite. Dropouts stop and the reduction of the speed is not noticeable. Knowing that, some people has opened a hole in the antenna and cut the wires that move the antenna so it stays always horizontal. Thanks for watching this video. And if it is helpful, please subscribe and send me your comments or questions. Bye.